Yeah, it's me again, Tim Tyler from Renner Creatives, and I'll be showing you how to do. I'm going to be focusing me on camera roll and frequency separation in this particular video. Please, if you have not subscribed to this channel, if you are new here, please like and subscribe and share to someone that you think wants to learn one or two things from here. Um, so, I'm going to be editing this picture. I shot this picture with a Canon 6D and a 15mm lens. And it was a one light setup with an 8600. So, and I shot it raw, not JPEG. So, I'm going to edit it first on, on um, camera raw. And first thing I'm going to do is adjust my basic settings. Yeah, I can access, I have access to, um, to adjust the light and all that. As you can see on the screen. So first thing, drag your highlights down. This is a little bit overexposed at the middle. Now because I shot these pictures on RAW, I can still retain some of my details. I think that, um, I know that that is why it's best that you actually shoot your pictures on RAW for mistakes like, not really mistakes, but so that you can recover details and um, you can readjust the white balance the way you want it and all that. So, and let's add a little vibrance to it. Let's also shared it on my picture profile was neutral. So, let's add a little vibrance to it. And then let's do this calibration thing. Now, this technique always works for my pictures. I go to my calibration. Then my blues, I take it up, my greens, I take it up, then I bring I, I reduce the saturation of my red. It works all the time for my pictures. You can try it out. I feel it's a new thing that people don't usually do. And you can adjust the you to work on your skin tones, how you want them to look like. So it really works. And you can try it out. Just do that kind of blends your whole skin together and you don't have different colors in different places so i would like to reduce my exposure because it's still kind of overexposed still kind of overexposed so let's take it down let's take it down Now let's let's use the maxing tool. Now this allows you to select your subject or the sky or the background, and then you can do it manually by just brushing over where you want to adjust. So you're able to adjust just that certain place straight from camera. So right now I'm looking at the face, and the face is looking a little bit dark, and that was because my light was not focused, was more directional to the body than the face. But I want to adjust that straight from camera roll, so. I just brush over where I want to affect. So which is the fake, which is the face and um, part of the arm. That's where I really want to focus on this time. Just to increase my exposure a little bit so that it balances with the way the picture looks. So after doing that, I go to my exposure and I take it up a little bit. Just a little bit, just until you know, until it balances with your picture. Well, you can also decide to do this in, in Photoshop with your cuff layers and all that but sometimes I just like to like balance the whole light thing here in my camera before I take it to and do some color corrections before I take it to my workspace in Photoshop so I think let's have it before and after now you see how uh, before and after yeah that's looking good that's looking good Then we open our image. Voila. First thing first, I crop my image using my 4x5 ratio. Because of Instagram, it's just perfect. It's just the perfect size for Instagram. So um, I use it all the time. Now I need a little room with this uh, with, with my with my model. So I take it up. 
Now to move the white, to remove the white, I will fade up. You mark your content, mark it, and once you click on enter, kind of fills. It, it's going to sample your subjects. It's going to sample your image and then fills the environment where it thinks it's it's best for it. Now for this picture, it's going to work because there's not too much prop um around my around my images. So sometimes if you have so many prop around, it might not be represent perfect. But in most cases, it works when you don't have too many things going on in the background. It works and it fills it up for you and gives you that space that you want in your pictures. So next thing we do have frequency separation. So like I said, I'm going to focus majorly on um, using camera raw and frequency separation. So color grading will not be will not be majored in this tutorial. And please again like and subscribe. So that's for low frequency. And yeah, in my We have our low frequency and which is the colors. We have our high frequency, which is more about the details in your textures. So to start with, I like to um, use my invert layer because what this does is that once I check it, once I check it. Now the white parts are your shadows, the dark part of your image, and the very dark parts here are your highlights, and the blue parts are your midtones. So that's how the invert works. So yeah, it, it, it helps me target where I really want to work on. Because using my mixer brush too, for frequency separation, I like to brush on my shadows differently, and I like to brush on my highlights differently and my midtones differently. So. I know that my dark part, I will work on that. I know that I'm working on my highlight like that. And consistently, when you are doing it, you make sure that you are, um, you are taking it off. You are checking what you are doing to see if you've not actually made any mistakes by brushing. Because using the mixer brush too, sometimes you can damage your image. You can you can really make her look a little bit awkward. So, and for my settings, my weight is on. Um, it's on 25, load. You can use the same setting, it works for me almost all the time. So you can use the same settings. And make sure you brush on your eyelid differently, brush on your shadows differently, and brush on your mid tones differently. So let's see. Let's have a look at what we've done before and after. So, yeah, we are. We are on the right path. Yeah, I'm going to speed up this video now so I don't bore everybody off. Yeah. So now let's try and work on um, the texture. And you can pick your blend brush too. You use it to sample from one part and you place it on another part. So usually I would advise that if you are sampling around your highlights, you, sh you should paste it on an highlight so don't sample from a very dark part and then you're putting it you're, you're putting it on the on your highlights that will not really work sometimes it gives you this dark color and then it's spoiling the whole color on your image so you sample around it you sample a neat part and you push it on where you have the blemishes so you use the high frequency to work on the blemishes on your image and um, yeah you sample and you paste, you press the alt key to sample and you just paste it on where you want to paste it. Alt key, click on where you want to sample and just paste it on it.
So now um, I'm going to do a little bit of using my lasso to with um, my filter Gaussian blur to trans from smoothing the colors out. I think I've said this in one of my videos before. Your lower frequency is more like your colors, and your high frequency has to do more about your textures. So you know when when you when you blow out a particular image, what happens is that you lose the texture and it retains the colors. And even if you're having like too many colors, they things like blend them together. So we're going to be using our lasso to selecting our highlight differently, our shadows differently, and our mid-tones, and then we use a very reasonable amount of blow. We don't just increase like 35 no i use around 14 and that's what i'm using for this image and just you know, hold this part out a little bit so remember i'm working strictly on my low frequency on my low frequency so please when you're doing when you're trying to apply this technique in your images do not use the high frequency Yeah, and say before and after. Yes, we Now, there's another thing I like to do in between my highlights and my shadows. I mean, in between my lower frequency and my high frequency, is um, trying to do a little bit of dodge and burn, or then see just a little bit of those um dodging. So, I'm going, I'm using my cuff layers, invert, control I to invert, and then you pick your brush. Make sure it's set to white, because. After you invert it, it changes to black, and we know that black white disappears and white appears. So, if you notice, I also hit my my low frequency, the one I actually worked on, just so that I can see where the light actually fall on when I took this picture. So I'm going to be brushing. Remember, my flow is on seven. Even seven is a little bit high, but just the way I can adjust that. And I brush on some basic highlighted parts. Like the leaves, where the light really falls, the chain, or head and all that. So that's what I'm going to be doing right now. As you can see. Right. Now you go to your property section and you feather it. Because if I do not, it's still it's going to look too much and it's going to look fake. So Let's add a little bit of softness to it so that it looks natural. Yeah, about that, it's, it's okay. Yeah. So let's have a bit fun after. So it gives you, you know, while doing all the old blurring and all, it kind of just blends your highlight and your mutants together. So you still have that separation between highlight and shadows. I just like to do that. So I'll be stopping the video from here. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share, thank you.